Welcome to a skill capped subscriber breakdown. In these videos, we first provide you with a detailed analysis of what it takes to win a given matchup by pinpointing the goals that you need to accomplish. Then, we break down a subscriber's game by highlighting where these goals were failed and where they should have done better. The result is that we're able to fast track your improvement by helping you avoid common mistakes and send you rapidly towards the writing that you desire. If you'd like to have your gameplay reviewed by rank 1 players, or to join our community filled with pros as well as other like-minded players trying to improve, join our Discord which is linked below. All you have to do is head on over to the user reviews channel and follow the instructions to submit a recording. We hope to see you there. Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another skill cap subscriber breakdown. Today, we're going to be looking at our subscriber playing Restoration Druid in 2v2 with his Demon Hunter partner, and he's coming up against Double Druid, which is of course Feral and Restoration Druid. For those of you unfamiliar with this format, we'll start by going over the high level goals you need to accomplish in order to win this matchup, before then analysing the gameplay and identifying the strategical mistakes and which goals the player failed to meet. Finally, after the game is over, we'll give you some top tips on how you can improve and what you should be looking to work on. By the end of this video, you should have a strong understanding of what it takes to win this matchup and you'll also learn about how to avoid any common mistakes found throughout our analysis. So, as mentioned, this is going to be Restoration Druid Demon Hunter versus Feral Druid Restoration Druid, and we're going to be focusing on our subscriber, the Restoration Druid's gameplay. So in this matchup, there is going to be four main goals you need to achieve in order to win. Number one is mana efficiency. In 2v2, mana is often the deciding factor, especially when playing with a demon hunter. There is a number of steps you can take to ensure you're being mana efficient. First is good innovate usage. Getting the most out of your innovate can save you a huge chunk of mana. Using it when you're about to spend a lot of mana on high cost spells such as regrowth and overgrowth, and also while it's up trying to get out an efflorescence and wild growth really helps with that overall HPS. Soul of the Forest use. Soul of the Forest is one of the most important tools in your healing rotation, making sure to never double swift mend and using Soul of the Forest on either regrowth or rejuvenation will allow you to stay ahead on healing at the cost of less mana. Utilising Omen of Clarity. Omen of Clarity grants you clear casting which in turn makes your next regrowth cost no mana. Utilising these procs correctly can save you a lot of mana over the course of a game. Number 2. Defensive cooldowns. Going hand in hand with mana efficiency is using the correct defensive cooldowns. Utilising your bark skin and iron bark at the right time not only will allow you to survive, but also reduce the damage you take, thus saving you mana. Trading these with important cooldowns from the enemy such as berserk or incarnation is going to be vital. Number 3. Talent choices. Knowing when to pick the correct talents is not something that's easy. It requires you to know the matchup and how it plays out. We know a Feral Druid likes to do split pressure, and with your Demon Hunter having a lot of self healing, you will the more than likely be the kill target. And with your main win condition being mana, we're looking here for you to be focusing on defense with your talent selection. So things like Overgrowth, Guardian Affinity, and even Focused Growth. Number 4. Crowd Control. Druids have a lot of crowd control available to them, and thus, thus using it well helps you stay alive or even set up kills. We're going to be looking for good mighty bashes, cyclones if you're playing it, and even rake stuns if you're fair affinity. As you're up against double druid, we're not going to be looking at a tangling roots. Okay, so now we've got the goals, let's get into the game. First thing we get to see is your talent choices. Now as I mentioned in this matchup, you're not going to be required to be playing offensive, as your main win condition with your demon hunter partner is going to be ooming the healer and winning on mana. This means taking talents to survive is extremely important. As we see here, our subscriber is opting to take Fell Affinity. Now in some matchups where you're required to play offensive, this is the correct choice. However, versus Double Druid, you're going to have to spend a lot of the game defensive in bear form, so we'll get the most out of Guardian Affinity. Not to mention, a lot of the time you're going to have the Feral on you, and if you don't, you'll of course have bleeds, resulting in restyles being very hard to achieve, thus devaluing Feral Affinity even more. With your PvP talents, you've gone for Fawns, Cyclone and Overgrowth. Overgrowth was the correct choice here. As mentioned, you're playing defensive and this is a great talent to help you easily recover and survive, so well done. Fawns, again, is a good talent when facing melee, so you have the right idea here. However, just think about the matchup a bit more. Double Drib is an extremely mobile comp that can easily switch targets, and the map you're on is Hook Point. 
which is the smallest map in the pool, making it even easier for the enemy to swap targets if you use fawns. So what I would have liked to have seen here is another defensive option, so either focused growth or even revitalize. Now you might be thinking focus growth suffers the same problem as fawns, they can easily swap on your blooms. However, you're playing with a demon hunter, he will passively outheal and leech a lot of the druid's damage over time effects and isn't really a viable kill target for the enemy team, so you're going to be able to keep blooms on yourself for the most part. And the last talent choice I want to quickly touch on is your choice to take cyclone. Now I don't disagree with you here, this can be fine in this matchup, they only have one short lockout in the form of skull bash, however it's going to depend on how you use it, if you're getting good use out of it it's fine, if not I would have liked again to see another defensive option instead, so either focus growth or revitalize once more. Okay, so to debrief on your goal of correct talent choices, I would have honestly liked to have seen you take these talents. You'll however opt in for a far more aggressive talent setup, taking some extra CC from Cyclone on top of the added damage from Feral Affinity and Fawns. So let's see if you can put these to good use and get the most out of them. Okay, now let's get these gates open and get into the game. You get some hots up on your Demon Hunter and get straight into Stealth. This is great as you're playing Feral Affinity. We're going to be looking for you to get some use out of it and go for an opener, now consisting of a Rake Stun and then getting up your Rip or either a Cyclone out of the Rake Stun to make use of your offensive talent lineup. Okay, so here we see you instead opt to open up with a Hibernate. Now, this is a mistake for a few reasons. First, you've completely wasted your Prowl. As you've taken Feral Affinity, opening from Stealth with a Rake Stun will stun the target for 4 seconds and on top of that deal 100% increased damage, allowing you to then either follow up with getting some more damage up in the form of a Rip or simply just Cycloning him. Secondly is your Demon Hunter is in meta. This means he's going to be doing a lot of cleave, as when in meta he's having to use Blade Dance to deal damage and with both targets stacked up he's likely to break it. He also on top of that has Immolation Aura up, as we saw a few seconds ago when you targeted him. And that's not even mentioning the fact that the Feral can just simply shift out of Feral form to avoid your Hibernate altogether. So continuing the clip, as expected the Hibernate simply breaks to your Demon Hunter's cleave, so you go for another one, again not worth the time as your Demon Hunter will once more simply break it. Now attempting the triple DR Hibernate, you look to Cyclone off of it. Now Feral Druids have a ranged kick and your Hibernate is going to expire before you land this Cyclone, so if fast enough he could have potentially landed an interrupt onto you, however the Feral opts to line of sight the clone and you just about manage to land it somehow. Now you're in a good spot despite the wasted Hibernates, the Feral is in a full Cyclone and the enemy Restoration Druid has wasted stun DRs on you, so you did the correct thing here and sit the stun and not use any defensive cooldowns. You look for the Recyclone using your Vortex. Now, as you've got stunned, you was unable to time your Cyclone out of the first one. So the Feral comes out of the Cyclone and drops combat. Vortex does not put enemies into combat. So the Feral comes out of your Cyclone and avoids your second using his Prowl. I would have liked to have seen you instead here use Moonfire or Sunfire to keep him into combat. Because of this, you're now in a bit of a bad spot. You've spent the first 30 seconds of this game looking for Hibernates and Cyclones, but now you have zero healing over time effects up and have wasted your vo Vortex, which can be a great tool at Kitin, and the Feral is now in Stealth, so he can get an Empowered Rake Stun out of Stealth onto either you or your Demon Hunter. He stuns your Demon Hunter and gets full bleeds up, whilst you try to catch up on Hots. Due to the Empowered Rake and you falling behind on keeping your Hots up, your Demon Hunter dips low and uses his Blur, as he's currently also hitting into Fawns. You use your Wild Charge to get back to your Demon Hunter and then use Iron Bark. Now, this is obviously an overlap. Although you had a few seconds to see your Demon Hunter's Blur, for future games, communication is key. Either have your Demon Hunter communicate to you that he's using Blur, so you know to hold your defensives, but overlaps like this can cost you games, so really try to avoid them. As your Demon Hunter has both of these defensive up, the enemy Feral swaps targets and lands a short stun on you. Now after this stun, I would want to point out something. Your Demon Hunter has your Life Blooms, two Rejuvenations as in an, and is also in meta, with Iron Bark and Blur. He's not going to die, and your Hots are empowered by your Iron Bark as you took the Stone Bark talent. You come out of the stun and you Swift Mend your Demon Hunter. These Hots combined with Iron Bark, Blur and his meta are more than enough to sustain him back to full health. This Swift Mend is a complete waste and better saved for the inevitable swap to yourself. Now focusing you, the Feral pops his Berserk. Now this is a Feral Druid's biggest cooldown and should be respected as so. Here we see you cast in a Hibernate. Now before we go any further in this video, let's quickly touch on Hibernate. 
For those of you unfamiliar, Hibernate is an 8 second CC that you can use on targets considered as beasts. So in PvP, that's druids in shapeshift forms like bear and travel form and even cat form, and shamans in ghost wolf. However, the big drawback is they can simply shift to immune the cast. So at the end of the cast, just shift out of form and immune the hibernate and waste your time. Stunning a target into a hibernate also doesn't work, as both druids and shamans can shift out of their forms into human even whilst they're stunned. So you might be thinking, what's the use of hibernate then? Well, primarily it's used when playing with mages. If you cast both hibernate and polymorph on an enemy druid, they're unable to shift both. Outside of that, you can probably sneak in a few on unsuspecting enemies at lower ratings. Okay, let's get back into the game now. This hibernate is not going to land, obviously. He has kick available and can either kick you on your cast, shift out of form or even stun you. Luckily, you are on stun diminishing returns. Otherwise, this could have quite easily been a full bash onto you whilst his strongest offensive cooldown is active and you only have in one healing over time effect currently up. You keep attempting to fake him using hibernate. This won't work. He's not silly and will shift at the end of the cast so all you're doing here is just wasting your time. Fake casting is fine, however fake casting with hibernate is not. As mentioned, he has no reason to kick you, he can shift or get dispelled by his healer. And you also have zero healing over time effects on yourself. If you feel comfortable fake casting, make sure you have hots up beforehand so you don't fall behind. What I would have liked to have seen here is one of two things. First is most optimally would have been for you to vortex the feral and use your travel form to leap away with wild charge, delaying him reaching you so you can get some hots up behind the pillar. However those were both wasted in the first 30 seconds of the game, so are now not available. With your consistent use of hibernate it looks like you enjoy making plays. A cool thing you could do here knowing you are on stun DR is to bash the druid and then start casting a cyclone and quickly cancel it. As the feral has all cooldowns up he will 100% always trinket this bash and try to kick you. Furthermore, you don't have your iron buck to trade efficiently for his berserk, so the most optimal play here would be to overgrowth yourself, fawns yourself and then get into bear form for the increased armour. So let's see how you handle this. Well you come out and once more start casting hibernate. Luckily for you, you're still on Stundia and bash is only a few seconds, meaning the feral messed up. If you wasn't, you would have pretty much had to use all your defensive cooldowns here to recover or maybe even simply die. You choose to instead use your bash here and force the Feral Druid to trink it. It was a good choice as he's almost always going to trink it in this situation. You wild charge away and the Feral Druid opts to not follow. Getting away and then hotting yourself up and attempting to go for a restuff in the process. Unluckily the Feral was too quick to get there and you don't drop combat. Even if you did however, it would have broken from your bleeds. Now as the Feral comes round, you once more again start casting Hibernate. Now I'm not going to repeat myself but by now we should all know why this is not the correct move. The Feral shifts out of form to avoid it and now you're at 50% with all your hots expiring. Now here you need to be using something. Overgrowth yourself and quickly get into bear form and let your hots heal you up. But instead you choose to wild charge away to build some distance. This is fine but you only have a short time before the Feral reaches you. You choose to spend this time trying to land a cyclone. Again, he's still got kick as we can see from your omnibar and you also have a Maledict incoming as we can see from both your weak aura and the debuff on yourself. Here would have been a great time to use your Shadow Mouth to completely avoid it. But as we know, the Feral still had his kick and it's ranged, so you get fully interrupted. Now with not a single healing over a time effect on yourself, a Maledict and the fact you're shortly coming off stun DR, now as we see, you shift into bear form and fawns yourself. I would have loved to have seen this way earlier, but now you've fallen behind, you're going to have to use a lot in order to recover. This is buzz by now you're off stun DR, so as soon as you shift out, you'll more than likely be stunned here. As expected, you shift out, dispel your maledict and instantly get stunned. Now you have two options here, sit it and use bark skin or trinket and overgrowth. Now I think if you tried to sit this stun, you would die, so you're going to have to trinket. As we see, that's exactly what you do, so well done. Sitting the stun and using bark skin would have not have been wise. You would more than likely would have died here. However, this whole situation could have been avoided if you didn't fall so far behind healing trying to hibernate. The Feral then casts Cyclone on you as you trink it. Now you could have lined this by stepping to the side. However, I can only assume you was more focused on staying alive as you felt so far behind. After the Cyclone, you build some more distance 
and utilize both your clear casting and soul of the forest procs on a regrowth. This is great, it's extremely mana efficient and you've fully recovered, so well done. So now that you've recovered, I would like to see you be putting Feral Affinity to good use and going for a restealth. As we see here, you've dropped combat. Also, just a very minor point, we see you opt to cast Rejuvenation on yourself instead of Life Bloom. Life Bloom is your most important healing over time effect. It not only does more healing and costs less mana, but it's the ability that procs your Omen of Clarity, giving you the chance at a regrowth at no mana cost. Now instead of going for the restealth and doing some damage or even cycloning with your rake stun, you go to hot your demon hunter. Whilst this would have been the best move defensively, you have chosen an offensive talent build as we mentioned in the start, so you need to be getting the most out of it. With the feral run in your direction, you quickly get into bear form, which is great. However, you have no life bloom out as already mentioned. Shortly after, you come out of bear and once more begin casting hibernate. Again, same as before, hot yourself up and cast cyclone if you wish to fake so we don't get into the same situation as earlier. Luckily, the Feral swaps out off you, but of course shifts the Hibernate on the way out. Okay, so now we finally see you putting that cap form into action, and it's been almost two minutes into the game. Again, back to your talent choices. Playing aggressive is fine. Make sure you have your hots up beforehand though. Do not fall behind. Now you bash the Druid. Whilst this isn't that bad, you're playing with a Demon Hunter. They need their stuns to maximize mana rifts. If you don't need Bash defensively, communicate with him. Ask if he wants a stun to land an extra mana burn. Also, you could have waited a few seconds for diminishing returns, meaning your Bash would have been full, so just always double check before using your Bash. Once more, after you shift out of Cat, you prioritize your rejuvenations. Get up your Life Bloom first. Now you finally manage to get full hots on yourself and see the enemy Druid running towards you whilst your Demon Hunter is cycloned. You use your Vortex and Leap to escape, so good job Kitan here and it was well played. If you didn't have Wild Charge and Vortex in this situation, you would have obviously wanted to go into bear form. You then get behind the pillar so they can't quickly connect and begin to heal yourself up. You are 50% and all your hots are about to expire. Now would have been a great time to use your Innovate, as you have no Omen of Clarity proc and you're going to have to spend a lot of mana. I would have liked to seen an Innovate into Regrowth and refresh on all hots on yourself and then refresh the hots on your Demon Hunter. However, you get into bear form and use fawns, as the feral only just swapped to you, so this is good. You're going to cause him to either swap or take a lot of damage hitting you in the process. The feral instead try to cyclone you, which you attempt to line of sight, so good awareness and well done. Now as you retreat, you apply hots to yourself, but neglect life bloom yet again. The enemy here swaps to your demon hunter and you're both hovering around 60% with barely any hots. Now would have been a great time to use innovate once more. Overgrowth your Demon Hunter and then build up some distance and hot yourself. You run to your Demon Hunter and use Overgrowth. This was for sure needed and is the correct choice, but instead beforehand I would have liked to have seen the Innovate, as you had a few seconds worth wasted globals before reaching him, and Overgrowth is Druid's highest mana cost spell. After Overgrowthing, use your Wild Charge to again build some distance. This is good. Build a distance is always very important, however you have your soul of the forest buff up, so make sure if you can't get the time to land a casted regrowth, you use this on rejuvenation, as if you let it expire it's a lot of wasted healing. With both druids running at you now, I would have liked to have seen you getting into bear form. It's obvious that they want to make an aggressive play here, so what you should have done is got the rest of your hots up, primarily an empowered rejuvenation and also your life bloom and then just get into bear form. But what we see you do instead is go into cat form, not do any damage, shift out and then get caught into a full stun, which you do the correct reactive play for though, in the form of using your bark skin. However, you wasted your soul of the forest proc and wasn't in bear form for the stun. Now, you kite a little and get the rest of your hots up with the Restoration Druid following you. You Shadow Meld and use that Empowered Rake Stun on the Restoration Druid. Here would have been a great time to possibly Cyclone him, but you'd go for the rip and opt to do some more damage, which is perfectly fine. But again, once more you're playing with a Demon Hunter. Your main win condition is Mana Burning off Stuns. You've put the Druid on Stun DR and used your Shadow Meld, so I'm going to say this wasn't the most optimal play, as if you think about it, what do you achieve by doing this? You've used a 2 minute cooldown to get a rake stun and a rip up onto a healer. Neither you or your demon hunter were in any danger, the druid wasn't low and he couldn't mana burn off it. I instead would have liked to have seen you hold your shadow mount for the next maledict or as a way to avoid cyclone if required. 
Moving on, as the Druid is now in stun DR, your Demon Hunter uses his Fall Eruption on the Feral Druid, as he's unable to land his Mana Rift on the enemy Druid. Okay, so now remember what I said about Hibernate. You can shift even whilst you're stunned. So the enemy Feral shifts and now you have his kick to deal with. This Fall Eruption could have been a way for you to ensure a free Cyclone, allowing you to fully recover and possibly then put your Feral Affinity to use and deal some damage to the enemy Restoration Druid. You then fawns your Demon Hunter and get some distance. This is good because it forces the Feral to either take a lot of damage hitting into fawns or run across the map after you. Now here again, you're in the same situation as before. You're behind line of sight and can drop combat. You should take advantage of this and go into Prowl and open with a Rake Stun. As we see, that's exactly what you do. Rake Stun in the Feral as he runs over to you and the stun is DR. You instead do some damage. This is great, so well played. Although after the stun ends, you once again prioritize your Rejuve over your Life Bloom. Now here you have Soul of the Forest and Omen of Clarity. You could easily use this to top your Demon Hunter to fall for no mana cost, as the Feral Kick is down and he's not even near you to begin with. You instead opt to Swift Mend, wasting your Soul of the Forest entirely. You then once again go for a Restaff, which is good, but instead of sitting there in Cat, you should have been using your Omen of Clarity and the Soul of the Forest you got from your second Swift Mend on a Regrowth, as you currently are sitting at 80% health with zero hots. Okay, so now we see you get bashed into a Cyclone, in which you trinket offensively to land the rebash on the Restoration Druid. I don't know if your Demon Hunter communicated that he could kill here or not, but it's highly unlikely that he's going to be doing 50% of somebody's health in a half stun. Whilst I'm personally an advocate for offensive plays, you need to consider the drawbacks. We know by your Omnibar that the Feral Druid has his Berserk back up. And if we get into the same situation as you was earlier, when your trinket saved you, then you would for sure lose now. As guessed, the Feral pops his Berserk shortly after you Trinket and starts going onto your Demon Hunter, who then gets Cycloned. Now, you currently have zero hots on either yourself or your teammate, but you build in some distance and hot yourself up in the process. So, well done. Now, what you do here is very good. You now attempt to fake cast the Feral, but this time using Cyclone. You successfully fake him and force the Feral to use both Maim and Bash to stop you, both of which are still on diminishing returns. This play was good, however, because you was on stun DR. If you wasn't, this would have been a risky move and you would have been better off just sitting in bear form. Again here, you make the same mistake. Instead of timing your Cyclone off the first, you go for another Hibernate, in which he of course just shifts and then restalfs. Remember, if you don't cast Recyclone or hit the target, they will drop combat. You get randomly maledicted in which you instantly dispel, so good job for that. Now here, we see the Feral get a restalf heading towards you. Make sure you get into bear. Bear form heavily increases your armor and will reduce the damage from the Feral's opener substantially. As you didn't get into bear form, you should be using Barkskin here. You've got no hots once more and he's popping his Tiger's Fury. After his opener, you bash the Feral forcing his trinket yet again. This was fine as you've fallen very far behind now due to the restalf and holding your Barkskin on his rake. Now here, you need to get away. How you should do this is by combining your Vortex with your Wild Charge. Wild Charge is off the global so you can combine both to quickly get some distance behind the pillar and recover. You however allow them to follow you and drop low. You should instantly react here by using your overgrowth, ideally with innovate that you have yet to use. You barely survive and use your bark skin, which was much needed as you've fallen heavily behind once more. Hopefully this should be enough to keep you alive, but once again after the iron bark you swift mend and fail to use your soul of the forest as the feral has kick you should be using it on rejuvenation and then look to kite like you are. Now here you've got away thanks to the pills from your demon hunter and your kite in. You're behind the pillar with a clear casting proc and soul of the forest. You could get your health back up to near full here at the cost of no mana, but instead opt to go for a prowl rake stun, but get knocked out by the feral bleeds on you and then proceed to trade globals with the restoration druid in cat form whilst your soul of the forest times out. Now remember, you've got no trinket and you're still on 50% with zero charges of swift men now and only one rejuvenation. Even now, you've still got time to use your soul of the forest on another rejuvenation. However, you opt to use that global for a life bloom and let the buff fall off. Now with the feral moving over to you once more, you should be getting ready to get back into bear form. Instead, you get bashed in normal form yet again. Now it's 53% dampening and you're running low on mana. The Feral has already used his Berserk and most likely won't get another this game. So just trade Barkskin here as you're stunned in cast form and will likely fall behind even more. You choose to sit and narrowly survive, but it's taking its toll on your health and mana bar. 
so always look to trade defensives in situations like this. Although you notice the throw is cast in Cyclone and you quickly line of sight it. So again, good job for that. You manage to build some distance and then once again, they swap to your Demon Hunter. As he has no hearts, you overgrowth him. This was the right play. However, you once again didn't innovate for this high mana cost ability. You follow it up with a regrowth just to help you stabilize. Again, if you innovated before the overgrowth and regrowth, you would have saved a lot of mana. Now here you're pushing him for a bash, always consider stun diminishing returns before doing so, as it was triple DR, the druid has iron buck and is unlikely to die in a 1 second stun. You see the opportunity to close the game and take it, getting into cat form and trying to kill. You still however have your bark skin available, and should have probably used it here as you dip incredibly low. Now here you recognise the druid isn't going to die before you, if you don't heal yourself. So you come out of form and try to save yourself using Iron Buck and Swift Mend and using your soul on another reju, which is good, and getting straight into bear form. So well done surviving here, you did the correct play. However, you're on 6% and still not using Bark Skin despite the game being as close as it is. With both druids completely oom, you sit in bear and the enemy druid dies, and your demon hunter saves you with an incap. Even now though, the game could still see a counter kill. You could have made this a lot less close by popping your innovate and spamming regrowths and following up the incap with a cyclone. Despite this, you survive by the skin of your teeth and take the win. Okay, so at the start of this review, I set some goals. Let's take a look at how you did on these. Starting with mana efficiency, we was looking for three main things. Innovate, Omen of Clarity and Soul of the Forest use. Innovate was not used once. Always make sure you're using this when you're required to do a lot of healing, often combining it then with a wild growth cast, overgrowth or even efflorescence. As for Soul of the Forest, there was many times where you would simply let one time out or you would swift men twice in a row. Avoid this at all cost. Omen of Clarity usage was poor, mainly due to the fact that your life bloom up time was very low, but also there was plenty of times you could have utilised using these procs to again stay ahead on mana. Next, the goal was to use defensive cooldowns well. Doing so can help you stay alive and ahead on mana, giving you some more time to play aggressive. Your iron bark usage was okay, however you did overlap with your demon hunter, so always make sure that you take note of which defensives your ally has used. Although you could potentially look to be a bit more liberal, trading iron bark for berserk, it's a fine trade. Throughout this game, there were so many times you could have used your bark skin, but opted not to. Barkskin is best saved for stuns and with you being caught out of bear form for almost all of the stuns, consider using this as a tool to not fall so far behind. Now this is the big one, bear form. Your usage of bear form was non-existent until near the end of the game. Look to use this more and try to make sure you're getting into bear form when you predict the enemy is going to stun you. A few of the stuns in this game were extremely obvious. Even if you're not playing Guardian Affinity, bear form is still a great tool to enable you to survive. Talent choices we covered earlier, however now that we've seen the game play out, let's talk about your offensive talent choices. Feral Affinity, I said, would not get much use because your goal is to play defensive until you win on mana. You managed to survive but the game was incredibly close and watching this game I can honestly say that you didn't get much use out of Feral, Feral Affinity. You managed to get one break stun outside of Shadow Meld and didn't really have that much time to deal damage in cat outside of that. Now Cyclone. I said it's going to depend on your usage and how much pressure you can get with it. You landed one cyclone throughout this game, so I can safely say that it was the incorrect talent choice here. Our last point was crowd control, and I already covered the usage of rake stun and cyclone, so let's talk about your use of mighty bash. Overall, it wasn't too bad. Look to use bash in your composition two ways, either defensively to survive or as a way for your demon hunter to land an extra mana rift. To do this, you need to be communicating that you have it available. Alright, so this can't be a subscriber breakdown without some tips you can take away and work on. Number one is don't hibernate. Single-handedly, this ability was what made this game hard for you. Realistically, you should have never pressed it at all this game. Remember, druids can shift to avoid being hibernated, and it's also on top of that dispellable. Outside of Rogue Mage, this spell is very niche. If you're playing at lower ratings and people are not fully aware, you can maybe sneak some in. However, don't cast it in their face. Number two, general healing. Your general healing rotation was a little off. Make sure you're always prioritizing life bloom over rejuvenation unless you have a soul of the forest. Also, use your soul of the forests. 
If you can freely cast, use it on regrow. If you can't, then use it on rejuvenation. Just don't waste them. Also, work on managing your hot up time. Keeping them up will stop you falling so far behind in the first place. Number three, correct talent choices. Try to think about how the matchup plays in your head. Do you need extra damage? Will I be able to get restaffed? Do I have to just to survive to win this matchup? Will I be the target? These are all important factors in deciding what talents you should be taking. Number four, don't be so greedy. 2v2 is often about trading cooldowns and not falling behind and having to use all your mana to recover. You can do this by trading your defensive cooldowns efficiently. Look for strong offensive cooldowns used by your opponents and then trade a defensive for your own to reduce the damage. And lastly is number five, innovate. Just don't forget about it. In 2v2 where mana is often the game, is extremely important. Just think if you're going to have to spend a lot of mana here and if you are, pop innovate beforehand. All right guys, this was a bit of a long video, but I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and are able to take something away from this game. As always, thanks for watching and plus skill if you enjoyed this video.